Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and what I thought we'd do today is I thought we would build a stitching pony that will work well or adapt to our bodger's bench or our woodcrafting bench as I've chosen to call it because it can do so many different things. And we're going to set this stitching pony up so that it will be also adaptable to be hooked down or held down fast to our woodcraft bench so that we can use it in conjunction with that as well for a stitching pony. The pretense of a stitching pony is pretty simple. You have something here that holds the two pieces apart and then you have two jaws that are you know about a half an inch apart when you're done and you have a drawing screw or a drawing bolt that goes through the middle that basically puts tension on the vise to hold that line of stitches up above where you can get to it very easily whether you're doing a saddle stitch or an easy all or something like that however you're stitching your leather it holds it in place for you so that you can use both hands to stitch that leather instead of holding the leather while you stitch it and you can use a vise for that and I've done that many many times just use a regular bench vise for a stitch pony but this will be something that we can use in conjunction with the woodcraft bench that we made before so these are going to be our uprights these are going to be our jaws when we're done we'll cut this to our jaws and this was all one piece of wood to begin with here that I split down and we're just going to use a piece of scrap 2x4 for our base material and for our in between and then we're going to have to get a bolt with a wing nut on or something to come through here and act as a vise stay with me and we'll get started Okay, so here's where we're at. These are the two pieces that we glued, and we're going to cut them off at 45 degree angles here and here to give us a set of jaws. I glued three pieces of the same stock together here, and I'm using a 2x4 for a base. These will go here, and I can offset that a little bit this way to give myself more clamping room here for the bench, or I can do it here in the middle so I can clamp here and here. haven't decided on that one quite yet. And I have another block here that will be put here and held fast. And I'll put another one on the other side that will be put there and held fast. And I may need to make this base just a little bit longer because of that. But I'm going to measure this base against my bench over here. And that's going to be my determining factor of how wide it is. Because it's going to be the same width as my bench when I'm done. All this will be connected down solid. A hole will be drilled through here. And a carriage bolt goes through there that can be tightened down to close this and cause the vising action. All right, so that's where we're at, and that's what we got left to assemble.
So that gives us our jaws. Now we just need to connect the jaws to the spacer. And we'll glue that down and then we'll screw it together as well. I like this Gorilla wood glue about as good as any of them. Seems to work just fine. It's got plenty of holding power, that's for sure. You know, I use a mixture of old and new tools. Just like I use a mixture of old and new gear. Depends on how much of a hurry I'm in and what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make something simple. And get it done quick and effectively. I'm going to use whatever I got available to me. If that's a modern tool that I can get the job done with quick, then that's what I'm going to use. If I'm trying to experiment with something to see how a tool was used or worked for a certain thing, then I'll go old school and try that. I think that's really what it's all about. It's just understanding. It's not a matter of don't use modern tools for things. It's a matter of understanding what the old tools are capable of in case you don't have access to modern tools. Okay, so that pretty much gives us our vise. Now we've got to put a screw through here and see how that's going to work. Because we need this thing to squeeze together like this, and it will. Especially once we get a screw in there. But we got to drill a hole for that screw first and figure out where we're going to place that. Now, I'm just kind of guesstimating this thing, to be honest with you, as far as where I want this screw to be in at. I'm going to try to take advantage of leverage and go over half the distance between here and the jaws because that's going to give me the most leverage up this direction. But I don't want to go too close to the jaws because if I want to put leather in there, I don't want that screw to be in my way depending on how deep the item is I'm putting into the vise. And I may, let me mark it on this side real quick here, I know where I'm going. What I may very well do is I may very well put multiple holes in here just for that reason. Now I can take a square and just kind of square that around and know where the center of that hole should be on this other side. Just like that. That's pretty close. Pretty close to the mark right there. Now, like I said, we could put more than one hole on this thing and that would allow us some adjustability if we needed it. And we'll just drop this carriage bolt through one side and I purposely went really really close on the diameter there of that hole. And on this side, I'm just going to use a straight washer and a lock washer and a wing nut. All right, so once we've got that in there, you know, if we squeeze down on it, it's going to close. You can see that, and that's what we want. We need to let this get good and solid down here at the bottom first. Make sure that everything's glued up tight. Get it pinched into our base that we're going to use here get that solid then we'll be ready to rock and roll okay so now looking at it on our woodcraft bench here what we want to do is we want to be able to use hold fast to hold this thing down and we're just about perfect for that as far as spacing goes right now with this thing in the middle of this board pretty much just like this we got a little bit of overhang here I'm not concerned about that that's all right I've got another piece of 1x2 stock here, like or 1x3 furring strip, and I'm going to put that here and on the other side, and that should give us a good solid base for this thing to work from. 
we get that all down solid, we should be set. All right, so we've got our base set up now. That's going to go on our workbench over here, our woodcrafter's bench. And now we need to glue this base down to this. Just like this. And put a couple longer screws in the bottom to hold it down. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking a really thin sliver of wood right out of the side with my chisel here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I need a little bit of give in there. I need a little bit more give in there, I should say, than what I've got right now. And by relieving some of that wood in a circular pattern like that, that's going to allow it to bend easier. And I'm only going about one third of the way through the material. You can see right here to make that happen. And I'm doing that on both sides. And this is kind of just an experiment. I've seen some of these that were relieved where the wood was thinned on the sides on the internet. So this is just something that I'm doing in the first one that I'm making as a trial. And that should allow it to flex a little bit more, hopefully without breaking, obviously. But it doesn't have that far to travel anyway to cause it to break. So we'll try that and see how that works out right there. Okay, so the whole deal with this stitching pony is, you know, it's held on here with two hold fasts and holes that were already created in this woodcraft bench. This is the solid base of it and would come off in one piece, go back on in one piece. But what that thing allows you to do, or what the stitching pony is really allows you to do is be hands-free when you're working on a project. So whether I'm doing this with two needles and I'm doing it saddle stitch style, saddle stitch style, or I'm using some type of a tool like this stitching awl, I have both hands free to work on this project and keep everything tight and I don't have to worry about holding on to my leather at the same time. And that is very advantageous when you're doing this stuff. And I can let go of everything and use both hands just to pull that thread through like that. And that's a big advantage when you're working on a leather project like this to have a stitching pony. It's a great addition to this bench because it's just another tool that you can add on to the bench very simply and easily. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed this video today on how to make a stitching pony and you could use this thing anywhere. It wouldn't have to necessarily be attached to the woodcraft bench. It's just another tool that I can use along with my woodcraft bench to make jobs easier for me. You can clamp this thing down to a kitchen table, a picnic table, it wouldn't really matter. But I would encourage you to build one of these things if you do much leather work when it comes to knife sheaths, axe sheaths, and things like that. This definitely gives you a lot better control over the work and a lot less fumbling around. I appreciate your views. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.